this is Tom Emery. We're out at Stagecoach Music Festival, the Barbecue Championships. It's our fifth year, and things are really, uh, have really grown from that first year when we only had 11 teams. And we had a great time, 11 teams and 10,000 bucks. But anyway, we're, we're, we've changed the contest up every year, adding little elements, and it's been a lot of fun. As you can see, we have the guys really go all out on the booths, and, and uh, it's a big part of what we do is that we attract the crowd in here. Now we're not only we got two days activity, so one day is pretty much uh, selling barbecue to the public at three dollars for three ounces. So my guys, you know, they do a thousand cups each, so that's a three thousand uh, dollar chunk of change. There, it's pretty good, pretty little payday for a little old barbecue team. Then the second day we have a KCBS four meat contest, which is, has been a state, it's California state championship. We have a lot of fun with that, and uh, some repeat winners. We have our. We use gold records for trophies. It's kind of unusual. They're industry standard gold records. And uh, we're always blessed to have the, the uh, Kansas City Barbecue Tour here on site with us. And this year we have Reese's Potato Salad added, added category. And I've sampled some of the, the guys' uh, entries. They were sharing them last night, just a little ideas. And I do believe there are some potatoes in that potato salad because they, the boys have done got creative. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, and we're also doing a barbecue judges class. So if I didn't have anything else going on, I, we went ahead and added a barbecue class. So that's a lot is going on at the Stagecoach Music Festival. Hope to see you in the future. Bye. Hi, this is Dale uh, from Wind Pigs Fly Barbecue at one of the biggest barbecue events that we participate in every year. Um, we are a barbecue team out of Oceanside, California, which is in North San Diego County. Um, we've been competing as a team for about six years now. In fact, this is the very event right here at Stagecoach Barbecue Festival. The very first event we ever participated in was five and a half years ago, which was an awesome event. It got us hooked on barbecue. Um, my team consists of my wife and I. We're a two-person team. We travel around. Um, we go to various states. We kind of stay in the, in the south um, southwest. We go into Arizona, Nevada, California, all up and down California. Um, and um, we just have a great time. We... Um, we participate mainly in KCBS contests, which are four basic meats. We do chicken, we'll do pork ribs, we'll do a pork butt or shoulder, and then, of course, the granddaddy of them all, the uh, beef brisket. Our strongest category has been our pork and our brisket. Ribs come in a close third, but we've been struggling here lately with our chicken, and we hope to... Um, rectify that situation right here at Stagecoach and uh, see what we can do. As you can see behind me, we've got a nice little booth set up that we um, also do a lot of vending for the public, which means that the um, public can come by and they can get samples of our barbecue and taste what um, good barbecue tastes like. And right now the ladies behind us are setting up the, um, the booth and we'll be ready to go here in about probably, oh, another hour and a half or so. Um, barbecue for us is a hobby, and hobbies are fun, and that's why we do it, because we have a lot of fun. If, if it's not fun, we're hanging it up. My wife and I, Tammy, she's, uh, whoop, I don't know where she went, but anyway, she and I um, have day jobs. She's a school teacher, special ed teacher at a high school in Vista, California, and I have Chevron stations. So I'm actually a Chevron dealer, and um, which kind of brings me to another thought. That we all are hurt in the same way. You know, we've got that price of fuel that's going up. But um, I want to let you know that it's not your local gasoline distributor that's creating a problem. It's not him. He's not, he's not making money on the deal. Um, if he's making 20 cents a gallon, he's doing really, really good. And that just doesn't cut it. That just doesn't cut it, and and it hurts us all. You know the price of fuel. Who wins in that? Well, you can read hey, the paper. Good afternoon. Like I can Today we're here at Stagecoach Country Western Music Festival 2011. Uh, it's a big, giant country western music festival with all kinds of acts. Two days, 65,000 people a day, and a Kansas City Barbecue Society sanctioned event. We're out here to compete. We're out here to feed people, mostly feed people and us. And so, uh, Meat Inc. is the barbecue team name. We've been together for about um, eight years, and we got together because we like to eat, and we bought some barbecues, and we thought it would be a good idea to eat 
and uh, cook some meat and give it to people. Sell it. Sell it to people? Sell it to people. Give it to people. Sell it. Sell it to people. And um, so today we're out here, <clears throat> and the main thing that we like to sell, kind of popular, is the, the Atomic Buffalo Turd. <clears throat> the Atomic Buffalo Turd, uh, we made 180 pounds of jalapenos stuffed with hard salami and cream cheese and then wrapped in maple smoked bacon and then we cook them for 90 minutes to two hours on the smoker and people eat them like candy it's like dog treats for humans and they're also low fat if you eat them while you're standing up uh, a lot of people like them we'll have a line out here lady uh, ladies will take their shirts off and show us um, th they'll give us money for atomic buffalo turds and then we also have a nifty thing called spam fries take the spam cover it in brown sugar and chipotle smoke it for about 60 minutes on high heat cut it into little strips that look like french fries but they're not they're spam fries and they like those too what do y'all do the rest of the week the rest of the week we um drink water and, and pretend to work and pretend yeah pretend to work for day and i twitter follow me on twitter meet inc I work at uh, Accutech Packaging Equipment. We actually manufacture packaging equipment. Uh, we make the machines that fill the bottles, cap them, and label them full of cosmetics or barbecue sauce or dry rub. So I get to call all of my customers and tell them, hey, can we make a machine for your new dry rub? And if you send me 20 pounds of samples, I'll make sure that the machine works well for it. Of course, we only put five pounds in the machine, and 15 pounds goes to the barbecue team. But don't print that or uh, send that on on the internet. That's top secret. How about the rest of the team? <clears throat> the rest of the team. Mike's retired, and uh, he's in charge of handling the money because he seems to be the most honest. And um, well, let's leave it at that. <laughs> Doug, he. Uh, what do you do? You eat a lot. I do. I eat a lot. And uh, you I drink water. I drink water and aloe. An aloe. Right. So well, I, I make cryptic, uh, all natural all nutritional them, huh? supplements. Let the people in. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I'm Josh Baker with El Fuego Fiasco, a uh, barbecue team out of Orange County, California. This is our head chef. This is uh, Mike Weiss. And we got Chris Lopez over there, new addition to our team this, uh, this season. So we're looking forward to having him. And uh, Mike will tell you a little bit about uh, our team, what we've been doing. We uh, had a good season last year, quote unquote rookie season. And uh, yeah. We're coming out, so here's Mike. We cooked one competition year before last. Last year, I think we did about five or six and uh, got some top ten calls in that first real season. It was pretty fun, and that got us addicted. And And uh, we build drums. Um, we just get food-grade ones, have them powder-coated and sand, or sandblasted and powder-coated. We cook on four, um, one for each meat, and that's about it. Outside, we all just have normal jobs. I'm a sales guy for FedEx, best company to work for. And uh, that's about it. I don't know much else to say. We do probably, I think, I don't know, what did I say, how many, probably about seven competitions this year we got lined up. And uh, we got family, so it's tough to do more than that. But it's fun. It's a hobby. Yeah, it, the cool thing about barbecue, I, there's probably people watching this that don't do it all the time or they're thinking, hey, I want to do that. It looks like a lot of fun. Mike got into it, crazy hobbyist. He was my FedEx rep. I have a swimming pool supply company, H2OPoolProducts.com. sell pool equipment all over the country online and he was my rep so he's like hey i do barbecue oh that'd be great I'd, i think i'd enjoy doing that so we got into it and then kind of same thing with chris chris has known mike for a long time and uh he got into it so it's something that anybody you know can do you you're not going to come out here first time and, and win it all but it's fun it's great camaraderie uh it's hard to find places nowadays where you know it's not so it's competitive but it's friendly competition you, you need something hey I, I i left my charcoal at home hey, they'll, they'll have an extra bucket uh bag of charcoal so it's just it's friendly you can get out here um everyone has a good time and uh a little stressful at times but 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 we all we all really Pete, enjoy Pete's doing firehouse it. barbecue today we're at the stagecoach country music festival in indio california started cooking out of a passion i've been uh doing a lot of barbecue started on gas about eight or nine years ago and then discovered what real barbecue was when got my first smoker and uh, just loved it from then and love cooking for people and uh, people always said how good it was so we decided to enter our first competition about two years ago which was uh, the Vista Rod Run barbecue competition in Vista California didn't come in last place so we were good there came in in the top third and uh, we we're hooked and so then we try to do as many competitions as we can and then we've started our own uh, catering company as well 
Uh, I'm the I'm the I'm the lead cook, head bottle washer, and everything else that goes along with it. My uh, my father-in-law comes out and helps and supports me, and some of my grunt labor, if you will. And my son comes out and supports as well. But when it comes to cooks and prep and turn-ins and all that, that's that's me. I'm a one-man show. Uh, today we're feeding the public uh, moink balls, which are bacon wrapped meatballs. Uh, one of our biggest things. We're also doing sausage and pineapple skewers. Another popular seller for us is redneck tacos. We take a small corn tortilla, a little bit of pulled pork, and some coleslaw, and people just love it. And then ribs and tri-tip as well. Uh, the number one was adequate, good chicken. Number two was just okay. Number three was okay. Uh, number four did have an odd taste, even left a bit of an aftertaste. Uh, the number five was by far and away my favorite. And the number six was Adequately cooked, but didn't leave a memory. Okay. Uh, yes, number one. I like number one. It was uh, well seasoned and easy bite through. Tasted very well. Uh, number two, got the same kind of comments. Number three was also very good. Uh, number four did leave an aftertaste in my mouth. Uh, number five was good, a little dry, I thought. And number six, uh, I, w I wasn't as crazy about that. was my lowest score. Hello there. I thought number one was really, really nice, bite through skin, like she said, very, very tender. However, there wasn't a lot of flavor. Now, number two was very nice as well, had a, a crispy skin. I liked that very much, but just didn't quite have the flavor that I liked, but the tenderness was nice. Uh, the third entry was, was pretty good, I thought. I liked it quite well. Uh, the fourth entry was, was not too well, and I thought it quite strange. My first uh, thought was kind of an off flavor, perhaps. Uh, the grill wasn't clean from cooking fish or just something that wasn't quite right. Uh, the fifth entry was absolutely beautiful. I, I, I ranked it very high in the presentation. Uh, the skin was very nice and bite through. The tender, tenderness was good, so overall it was a pretty good piece of chicken. My favorite, however, was number six. It, it didn't score great in appearance, but the tenderness was nice and the flavor was nice. It wasn't over-smoked, had a nice smoky flavor, not overpowering sauce. Overall, it was a really, really great entry. Hello. Um, entry number one, I thought, was really beautiful appearance-wise. Uh, it was really nicely cooked. A little bit less moist than I prefer. I really like the flavors in it. Um, entry number two, I thought, was really nice as well. A little bit on the dry side for me. Um, entry number three, I also enjoyed it. It did have a slight bit of a creosote taste on the outside, the piece that I had anyway. Um, entry number four, um, that was my least favorite, I think. Um, Appearance-wise, it just looked kind of wet. There wasn't any crispness to it. Um, it I didn't find it cooked very well. Entry number five, I quite enjoyed, again, a little bit on the dry side. Appearance-wise, I thought it was beautiful. I liked some of the flavors in it. Entry number six, agree with previous people. Appearance-wise, it scored lower, but it was actually quite tasty and, and very moist as well. They were all very, very good. It's very hard to compete between selections, but uh, the first one, I thought the appearance was superb. But, uh, I like the taste. Um, it was a rich for me, but I, I liked it a lot. Uh, number two was probably just a little bit under comparable to that. Uh, number three, I enjoyed, but not as, as much as one or two. Number four was my least uh, preferred one. Um, number five, I liked the glazing and the presentation, uh, just like the first one. Um, I, I thought the presentation and I, the smaller sections, I like the smaller pieces. And uh, the last one was good, but it just uh, seemed like it was pounded or, or, I don't know, a little bit different than the other ones to compare, but it was, it was excellent anyway. Okay, now which one did you like? We seem to like the fourth one. That's Which one did you like? Which rib did you like? What uh, number is that? Fifth one, two, four, nineteen. No, just the fifth one. Yeah. You like the fifth one on the plate? Yeah. Why? 
the wood. I found it very tasteful. I found it appeared well in the box. And um, very tasty and very tender. This one, and, and, and consequently, this one was tasteless. Number six? We like number four. Seven. We like number four. Number five and number four. Juicy, juicy, and moist. The guilty is next four numbers. They were both delicious. And they were just tender. You could bite through it. The meat came off the bone. All that bite. Yeah, actually, in, in the box, I gave that a nine. Okay. You are? I'm Brian. From the Rib Ticklers. making a pork box today. I just use one part of the whole butt. It's the money meat. So I just take that part off and the, the rest is just uh, pretty much garbage. Yeah, we're going to put some pulled on the bottom to keep everything else hot. And I slice up the money meat. This one ain't going to, this one's falling apart. This one's a little overcooked. This one's a little overcooked, so. And Brad's going to pull this stuff. We're going to use that to keep everything hot. We'll go ahead and pull all that bread. And we slice this up so that it uh, Kind of, kind of fans out. Do you sharpen your own knives, or does somebody do it for you? I do, but this one ain't working real good today. Stuff's probably just gonna fall apart. Actually, electric knife works real good right here, but we don't have one right now, so. Two, three, head gummit. This really ain't turning out the way I planned to. So, are you just putting that in there right now? Is it staying hot? All right. Then we're gonna take some chunks out of here. we got red oh, Chris has a clock over there excuse me all right this is some special sauce we got mixed up from 
when we wrapped up the, when we wrapped it up. Came out of the, out of what dripped off the pork while we cooked it. Parsley. All right, so, huh? Where's the parsley going to go? Right here? No, no. That's uh, about it. We're just going to garnish the box up a little bit and make it look a little nicer. Make it look a little nicer. That's good, Reg, for that. This just breaks it up a little bit. Well, that's about it. That's uh, that's our pork box. How much time okay. you got? I don't know, we got a few more minutes, so we're done early. Okay. That's what we're doing today. And you are? I'm Brian from the Rib Ticklers. And who's our sound person? Uh, turn the microphone towards us. Oh. Kristen. Kristen who? Kristen Silver Thank with the Rib Ticklers. Thank you. <laughs> well, number one, I liked everything about it. Um, the tenderness and the taste. Number two, gosh. Uh, I don't really remember number two. Number three had some type of cola taste or something. That was something I never tasted before. Um, four was good. Five was good, and six was good. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm here with the, with the same judge on. Number one, I like number one all the way around. It was uh, it was tender, flavorful. The presentation I thought was very good. Probably my second favorite would be number six. It had uh, real good flavor. Um, number five definitely had a nice, strong pork flavor. It wasn't overpowered by any sauce or any rub. Um, two was also very good. The presentation I didn't care for as much, but the flavor and the tenderness was really good. Um, Four and four and three, they were they were about average. 
Yeah, number one, I think uh, it was, was very good. It was, I thought it had good texture and uh, the uh, taste was very good. Number two was um, just the pulled pork and although I had nothing left of it, uh, it didn't have much to taste with it. So uh, number three, <clears throat> the taste was uh, a little bit um, mushy and uh, otherwise it was good. Four was, um, four was just kind of, uh, tasted pretty good, but it, it was a little bit dry. Five um, actually looked good, but it didn't ta quite taste as good as I thought it was going to be. And, and number six uh, actually was very tasty and uh, had, had some, uh, I think, nice texture to it. Okay, number one was definitely my favorite. Uh, it was very tender, and I liked how sweet it was. Number two, um, it was a little bit too tender for my liking, I guess, um, but the taste was good. Number three, it had a really different um, taste to it. Some kind of sauce I put on it was different, but it was tender. Um, number four, I thought it was a little bit bland. Um, number five, that was good taste and also tender, like number four. And number six was another one of my favorites. It was very moist. It was a different kind of sauce, but I think overall it was really good. I like number one because I thought that it was really tender and I liked the flavor. And then on number two, it was also as, it was tender, but not as tender in my opinion, and the flavor was also good. On number three, the um, the burnt part was actually better than um, the regular piece of brisket. Five was very chewy and dry, and the flavor didn't sink in all the way. Number oh, this was number four. Number five was good because. There was a lot of different options that you could taste that, that it cut in different ways. And then number five or number six was very tender and it was great. Okay.